Hey, Tim Sykes here. Just wanted to do a quick video lesson, and I'm recording this probably earlier than I've recorded any other video lesson lately. Um, usually, I'm, I'm busy trading. I probably should be trading right now, but it's important for you guys to see these morning spikes, whether they succeed, whether they fail or not. Um, too many people just trade randomly, and right now, I think the single best time of the day to trade is at the market open or near the market open. Whether you're long or whether you're short, there's two opportunities here. You can try and buy the morning spikes or you can try and short the failed morning spikes. But this pattern is the single best pattern that I see because we've seen so many stocks go true supernova. Uh, if you remember, I guess the best example of my own trading is BGI a few days ago uh, where I bought it right in here at a buck 20 ish and it went to five within a few hours. I did not expect this, but, and I sold, you know, I made my 20%, I didn't make 400%, but the fact that this happened helps you understand what kind of a market there is right now. Uh, TRCH also did something similar where it went from 60 cents to a buck 80. Um, there was another one, I can't think, there's too many. Let's talk about today, specifically. Um, near the market open, you should be in the chat room, okay? Uh, there are over a thousand traders talking about potential morning spikers, and you need to be aware of all of them because any of these plays can go true supernova. Uh, there's a lot of nastiness and hatred with penny stocks, obviously, but when a stock can triple in a few hours, I don't see how you hate on that. You know, I'm very grateful for each and every supernova uh, or low flow runner, you know, uh, SPU actually is another one that's going today. Uh, SPU, I should mention, spiked pretty big a few weeks ago, right in here, and it went from a buck seventy to four dollars, and now it's kind of closing this little circle. So today, this is a very nice uh, morning spike, and you know I missed this because I was busy with other plays, but this is just an example. You're buying ideally the stock when it's making new day highs and you remember that this is a recent runner i don't want to buy just random stocks uh, but recent runners have a higher probability of re-spiking because they're fresh in traders minds um, and they can you know keep going uh, short sellers are scared to short them because as a short seller you should be scared because any of these can go true supernova i really don't think that it's a good time to be a short seller I know that short sellers can make money when these morning spikes fail, but we see too many of these plays that you don't think are really that amazing. I mean, BGI is a freaking jewelry store, um, and it goes supernova. And then today also, it goes from you know 250 up to 290. Um, so it's very tough to short sell when you can't uh, identify your risk. Now that said, there are some short sellers with big accounts, people like Tim Grittani, where they know that most of these supernovas come back down so they can afford to add to their shorts into every spike and build a position. Most of my students have just a few thousand dollars. That's not a feasible strategy. You know, you get like one shot to short. And if you're wrong, you know, you got to cut losses quickly. You can't risk losing 20, 30, 50, 70%. So advantage goes to those with big accounts. This is specifically why I'm trading with a small account this year so that I'm not tempted to partake in these strategies because, frankly, short selling these morning spikes is not a good strategy for people with small accounts. So it's very important that you recognize that. It's not just about being a good trader or a bad trader. It's about what's good for your small account or big account. Uh, and big account shorting is feasible because you can add to your position. It's very, very important that you understand that. Uh, the big account short sellers don't really realize it, that they have such an advantage because it's been a while since they had such a small account. I encourage everybody with a big account to go back to trading with a small account every now and then so that you can understand the perspective of the little guys. Although, you know, most people with big accounts, it's like an embarrassment to trade with a small account, right? Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so rich and so good. Whatever. As a teacher, I think it's fantastic for me to trade with a small account because I put myself in the shoes of my students. And BGI was a play that I was actually buying yesterday twice. I chased this morning spike a little too much in the 270s and in the 250s. In hindsight, you know, which is always 2020, you should be long this 
overnight here in the 230s and sell into the morning spike. Again, stocks that spike in the past day or two or in the past week or two usually can spike again. So we see two morning spikes in a row on BGI. Yesterday, 220 to 3. Today, 250 to 3. Now we have a perfect double top. This reminds me exactly of TWER. I was buying this in here in the 260s. I didn't catch the initial breakout, but I took the meat of the move, and this was a nice nearly 50 cent a share winner for me. And then guess what? Day two, I did not play it, but I want you to see the pattern. It spiked again, and then you have a double top. So TWER and BGI, I mean, two unrelated plays, but both are low flow potential runners and supernovas, and both have now spiked two days in a row, and they both had perfect tops. So short sellers can win if you short at the top, which again, I think is risky. And longs, if you have a small account especially, you can win uh, just recognizing that, you know, recent runners can morning spike two days in a row. One of my students actually nailed it. Um, I copied a few of these people. Um, let me see. Where was it? Right here. Uh, Keon EC808 bought BGI at 237 yesterday before the close out this morning at 295. Let's just do some math here. 2.95 minus 2.37. I'm not that great at math. Divided by 2.37. This is a 24% overnight winner. Okay? If you're a hedge fund manager or a mutual fund manager and you try and make 24% per year, you're a god. You are a hero. And on penny stocks, which the whole world hates, you can make 24% overnight. Not in a month, not in a week, not in a year, overnight by recognizing this pattern. So it's atrocious the way that people think of penny stocks and don't properly utilize them. I was buying BGI yesterday, so I was on the right track. And again, being on the right track matters. Even though I did not buy it correctly, you know, the, the best buy was to buy it last night, I recognize that this former supernova, recent supernova, can spike again. I just did not hold it overnight. That was the right play. So I learned. And I'm going to, you know, learn from that. And I'm going to learn from TWER because I bought that and made some nice profits. But in hindsight, I should have did bought it the next day. So the market is teaching me every day what patterns are working. And I wanted to just show you this. Uh, this is straight, you know, some, some comments pulled out of my chat room. This is the way that you should be thinking. Uh, first of all, Fadster bought OPTT. This was a recent supernova um, that tried morning spiking today. There really was no play, you know, unless you got in, you know, really near the market open in the in the low threes here, and you sold into this spike. I mean, I guess there was there was forty cents a share of upside, but you had to be quick. What did Fadster do? Yeah, I mean that that's a good trade right at the market open. Um, but I, I bring up some of these comments because it's important that my chat room uh, is used properly. Uh, don't listen to anybody. Don't think like, oh, this guy is such a great trader. Let me follow his alerts. Don't follow alerts from anybody. But do use chat rooms as alerts to find what stocks are moving. Use it to increase your watch list. So when you know Johnny says BGI is plus 11% at 932, guess what? I mean, he's talking about 932 is right here. Um, you know, he's before it spikes all the way up to 295. Now, I'm not saying chase any alert in a chat room. I'm saying use the chat room to spot stocks that can spike. Oh, SPU is running even more right now. It just got a secondary spike. Freaking awesome. Welcome to morning spikers. So SPU is the best morning spiker so far. BGI was a decent morning spiker. OPTT was a decent morning spiker. I bought SUNW, which is probably the worst morning spiker out of all of them. And it has the best news because they want a contract with Amazon to make Amazon fulfillment centers, uh, you know, more solar friendly. And uh, I did not want to chase it. This is the beauty of being wrong on morning spikers. The risk reward is so superior if you follow the rules. Now, they announced the contract with Amazon right in here. And the stock was trading you know, 275, 285, 270, 275, 265, 270. So this is the range, okay? It starts really spiking in here up to 295. Now, I'm not going to chase 
any of these stocks. I don't care what the news is. I don't care what the contract is. Uh, when I bought BGI the other day at a buck twenty, let me just show you the chart again. Even though it looks like I I was chasing it because I bought it at one twenty and it was up from fifty cents, I actually bought it on a dip. It was a dollar forty and I was buying it on a twenty cent a share dip. And the reason why I do that is because any of these morning spikes can fail, and you have to be aware of that. So by dip buying it, you're not taking on as much risk. Um, now, obviously, some of these stocks have no dips. Uh, like yesterday, BGI, I chased it a little bit. I still had a profit, but there wasn't a dip to be bought before the morning spike. Um, so sometimes it, it just can't work. And I would say if there is no dip, then even avoid it. Because BGI yesterday, I, I probably should not have bought. Um, buying a dip increases your odds and your risk reward dramatically. Because I'm buying it on a dip here at 120. Uh, you know, you can't see it in this chart, but if you go back to my video lessons from a few days ago, you can see it in the chart. I had a specific risk because it dipped from 140 down to like 112, and I bought it at 122. So if it was going to drop below 112 here, I'd be out and I'd lose 10 cents a share. As it turned out, it did not dip ever, <laughs> and it just kept going. Um, and I, you know, I could still be holding it and I would have double my money. Um, today with SUNW, I did not want to chase it, A, because it's solar. I don't care what the contract is, and now, you know, it's, it's dipping even more. But solar plays, energy plays, commodity plays, they are beholden a little bit to the commodity and the, the price of oil um, a little too much for my taste. So I did not really want to buy this, but I saw a nice dip off the highs of 295 down to 260-ish. And guess what? what? What's better than dip buying at support? Because the former resistance right here is at about 260-ish. So it has not, now it's not held support. But at the time, I was thinking, okay, it should hold 260 support. And it did. Um, we got a nice bounce back to 290-ish, but it could not break out. This is very worrisome if you're ever in a morning spike. Uh, remember BGI, I was dip buying it the other day. After a dip from 140 down to 120, and it went back to 140, 150-ish, but it couldn't really break out that convincingly. So I sold it at 150-ish because it was a weak breakout. Uh, with SUNW now, it's not even a breakout over the pre-market highs. It's, it's a double top. So you have to be very careful with these double tops. Um, who nailed it? Uh, let's see. This guy was in at 260 out at 282, made 150 bucks. Volition made 10 cents a share. Good recognition of the wall of sellers. Uh, BL wins it uh, in at 273 out at 287. I like this. I, I like the chat room talks about other former supernovas. This is, again, the beauty of the chat room. We're talking about hot plays. We're trying to say, wait a minute, is this going to morning spike? It's, you know, think of yourself as a scientist and you have to try and find the right combination of chemicals. These are all different chemicals. These are all different potential plays. OPTT turned out to be a failed spike. BGI turned out to be a failed spike. SUNW turned out to be a failed spike. But that's okay. That's what scientists do. They test out combinations, and if they're wrong, they're wrong. Trading is no different. So Trading Tom says OHGI is a former supernova, and we got a nice little morning spike, and now this one's a failed morning spike. It happens. It's okay. Um, here's Fadster saying BGI, same pattern like yesterday. It stuffs near three, now using 270 as resistance. Good job. This is probably my favorite student of the day. Um, his name is Morris. He emails me questions all the time. He's a challenge student. He's very dedicated and he's getting it. And he says, watching SUNW like a hawk after studying your spike ability on the subway and dip buying this contract winner. And he timed it better than I did. And he was in at 265 out at 290. And I can guarantee you he was in at 265 because he recognized that the multi-week breakout is 260. And he was out at 290 because it could not break the pre-market highs. This is a perfect trade. And I know it's not making that much, but 25 cents a share, you know, this is nearly 10% in 10 minutes. So whether you want to trade a stock that I'm trading or any other stock, I don't want you following alerts or picks or, you know, gut feelings from anybody. I want you studying my DVDs and video lessons and making educated choices. And guess what? You don't have to just dip buy. You can also short sell. So here's Getting Rich 91. 
he shorted at 283 and covered at 263 when he saw that it could not break the pre-market highs. So you can do that too. Again, for me, I don't think that's good risk reward, but maybe getting rich 91 has a big account. Maybe getting rich 91 doesn't care so much about, you know, playing so safely. Maybe you can take a little more risk. It's totally up to you. We're all different people, but I want you to see the openings, the opportunities. So dip buying contract winners at support like SUNW. I mean, even though it's now failing, it was fantastic risk reward. And even right now, I mean, it's down, what, nine cents a share from my entry point. If somehow I did not sell, if somehow I was stuck in it and, you know, there was 30 cents a share of upside. So in the first hour of the trading day, there is three to one risk reward. If you time it right, you can make 30 cents. If you don't time it right, you lose 10 cents. That's pretty good risk reward. And frankly, you know, up until the past few minutes, I mean, the risk reward really was, you know, uh, like 260 ish. So the, the worst case scenario for me, and I don't hold morning spikes, especially failed morning spikes that long. Worst case scenario for me is that I probably would have broken even and I just would have been like, ah, you know, there's, there's nothing. But best case scenario is making 30 cents a share. So now the risk reward, depending on how close you want to play it, there's 30 cents a share of upside and no downside. Um, that's penny stocking, okay? Choosing stocks with better reward than risk, using known patterns. And by the way, SPU just keeps going. I love this. I, sh I actually probably should be trading this while I'm, while I'm doing it. This made a nice new high. You can see it making new highs here, just inching up, inching up, inching up, a few cents a share, and then going supernova into here, and you know, then breaking the day high again. You can buy breakouts at 410, and now it's you know 460. So fantastic opportunities everywhere between SPU, which is a successful morning spiker, OHGI, which is a failed morning spiker, OPP, OPTT, which is a failed morning spiker, SUNW is a failed morning spiker. I saw SMSI was spiking a little bit too. That's a former runner, and this one's uh, dropping a bit. You know, you have to expect most of these morning spikes will fail, okay? And that's why short sellers, frankly, are, are short sellers. That said, all it takes is one to really succeed and a short seller is really sunk. And I don't know how far SPU can go, but you know, this can happen. These stocks can go supernova. And as a short seller, you know, especially even if you have a big account, I mean, you're, you're adding to your short, you're adding to your short, where's the top? You know, what if this thing goes to $10 today? Which it could, you know, we, we've seen madness recently, HMNY, you know, go from one to the 16th. And my top student, Tim Gratani, had his, one of his biggest losses in the past few weeks, just shorting it, thinking it can't go up anymore. Well, one to 16 is possible. And this is holding now in the nines. MGT. There's so many people who think this company is just a scam and a fraud and it's going to crash. And guess what? It went from 25 cents to over $5. And now it's been uptrending, although lately the trend has cracked. So don't try and think, oh, this stock has to go down. And just because a stock like SUNW won a contract with Amazon today, don't think that this stock has to go up. Uh, your hypotheses based on the news and the value of a company is irrelevant. Listen to price action. If a stock cannot make new highs, then sell your long position or consider shorting it. If a stock is making new highs, be very, very scared of it because it can keep going no matter what you think. So I want you practicing safe trading practices and I want you to be safe and I want you to respect price action more. A lot of you guys, you know, like to think about the news too much. Like, oh, the news is so great. The stock has to go up. No, it doesn't. Okay. Listen to what the market is trying to tell you. Listen to what the stock is trying to tell you. If a stock is making new highs, fantastic. Hold your long position as much as you can. But if it gets stuffed, if it double tops or triple tops, accept the inevitable that it's probably just another failed spike. So that's my lesson for today. I'll see you guys in the chat room. Everybody better be in the chat room every single day. 
ideally between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern. That's when we're seeing the most morning spikes. Thank you.